What's up, man? How's it going? I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance. And in this video, you're going to learn about 11 things that I have stopped buying to save money. Let's get into the video. I used to spend so much money on protein shakes. I mean, since I was 14 years old, I've been heavily into fitness. Like, I love working out. It's actually one of my favorite things to do. And I've always had a little bit of muscle mass to myself, but like years and years ago, like when I first got started, I was tiny. So something I used to obsess over was gaining muscle and getting bigger. And over the past 11 years of working out, I've spent a lot of money on protein shakes. In my college gym, I was always buying protein shakes. At my regular gym, I was always buying protein shakes. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you, they were delicious. And their marketing was genius, like they made you feel like you had to have their protein shakes. You know, they go over the benefits of having these protein shakes and how they're better than other ones on the market, the different macro levels, you know, the carbs, the protein levels, all that good stuff that I love to know. And of course, they went into how it would help you meet your specific fitness goals based off a different mixture of shakes that they had. Not to mention the fact the girls behind the counter at the smoothie bar are flirting with you and next thing you know, you're buying a protein shake. Yeah, that'll be $8. Excuse me? Eight what? Yeah, they were $8 a pop. So yeah, I stopped buying those. I just make my own instead. I mean, I have a blender, I have protein, I have fruits, I have milk, and I have ice. I can make my own protein shake. So when you look at the cost of the blender and the protein that I have, which is about $114 altogether, and you consider the fact that I used to buy one protein shake a day every time I went to the gym, it only took two and a half weeks for the blender and the protein to pay for themselves. Another thing I don't pay for anymore is haircuts. Appearance has always been extremely important to me, and where I'm from, if your haircut doesn't look good, you will get clowned like immediately that said I'm from North Carolina but I'm living in northern Nevada right now and it's very hard for me to find a barber who can cut my hair right in the way that I want it just simply because it's not as culturally diverse over here as it is in North Carolina and most barbers in my area just aren't used to cutting thick hair like mine like when I when my hair is grown out it gets extremely thick Look, man, one time I sat in the chair and the barber started to comb and brush my hair like they usually do before they start cutting you, right? And the barber was like, hey, bro, you have gel in your hair? I was like, gel? <laughs> nah, man, my hair is just thick. <laughs> But anyways, I realized that I was spending $20 every other week for a haircut that was subpar compared to other haircuts I've gotten in the past, who have charged less, by the way. So during quarantine, when all the barbershops were closed, I took it upon myself to go ahead and buy my own equipment to cut my own hair. Yup, I got my own clippers, trimmers, liners, brushes, combs, all that stuff, and then I spent hours upon hours watching YouTubers just like me who have thick hair teach me how to cut my own hair. And I've been cutting my own hair ever since. So instead of spending $480 per year on haircuts, I'll be cutting my own hair from now on for free. And it's not gonna look 100% perfect. Like, I mean, I've been doing it for a few months now and it's still not gonna be 100% perfect, but the point is it looks presentable and it looks good and I'm saving $480 per year and I'm only going to improve. Let me be real for a second with you though. I stopped buying alcohol. That's right, I stopped buying alcohol a long time ago. As a matter of fact, this right here was in the thumbnail. You know how on The Simpsons they have that Duff beer? It's Duff, but this is an energy drink. So in case you're wondering, didn't you buy alcohol just for that thumbnail? No, no I didn't. <laughs> Definitely didn't, I stick to my word, I don't buy alcohol. But the reason I don't buy alcohol is because I don't drink. I've never been big on drinking, period. Like even when I was in college and I used to drink occasionally, it still was never a big deal to me. But when I was in college, I did buy alcohol here and there. It was the environment that I was in. It was the people I was around. Most of the people that you know were my friends and everything else, everyone, literally, just about every single person that I went to school with had a drink every now and then. And it was pretty much on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis where they would, you know, on the weekends, drink. It would be a beer, wine, sometimes even liquor, but the bottom line is they would drink. That constant environment and influence that was around me ended up having me picking up a beer every now and then. It wasn't as frequently as them, but I definitely did pick up a beer every now and then and I would spend, obviously, my money on it. 
But after constantly seeing what excessive amounts of alcohol does to people, specifically broke college students, as well as their finances, to me as a young man, that whole thing was just very much a turn off because I had big goals for myself and for my life. And I felt like alcohol was merely just a distraction. I mean, you may not agree with me, but that's just how I felt overall about alcohol. And plus, I could not stand the taste of it. And once I graduated and got out of that environment, I haven't even thought about alcohol. The way I see it is like this. In my opinion, it tastes horrible. It's empty calories. And it's just, it, it can be expensive if you make a habit of buying alcohol on a regular basis. This isn't me telling you to stop buying alcohol. This is just me telling you why I stopped buying alcohol and my story behind it but it can save you a ton of money. And I just know that people within our age group struggles with alcohol. Like I know for a fact that you have friends who go out every weekend, drink every weekend or whatever the case is. And then if they go out to a bar to get these drinks, they're spending way more than they would if they just bought the alcohol in the stores. But here's the thing. They'll be complaining about their finances, right? I mean, I'm sure you've experienced that before. I know I have. I mean, I've, I used to be that guy, you know what I mean? So just cutting that out of your expenses can save you a lot, a lot of money, hundreds per year. And you know, same thing goes for coffee. I stopped buying that mess. I don't drink coffee, nor am I a big fan of coffee. As a matter of fact, I'm so big on not drinking coffee that I don't even make it at home and I don't even have a Keurig. Like, I straight up don't drink that stuff. I just personally feel like there's healthier, better tasting alternatives to keep you awake and alert, such as apples or water, for example. But there was a time when I was a coffee junkie and I didn't necessarily do it for the taste or whatever. It was purely just to pull all nighters in college, get projects done and get as much work done as I possibly could in one sitting. That was when I was huge on coffee. That was when I was hitting up Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme, all those places on a daily basis to get some coffee and or donuts. So yeah, when I was pulling those all nighters and getting all that work done, yeah. Those coffee shops were getting a lot of my money, especially Starbucks, which in case you're wondering how much I would spend, it would generally be between five and seven dollars a day on coffee from Starbucks. So when you're a college student who isn't necessarily making that much money anyways, that five to seven dollars adds up pretty quick. I want to make something very clear here. Buying coffee does not make you broke, despite what some influencers might tell you. However, you wanna be smart about it and it's overpriced. And when you think about how much money you save by either making your own coffee or just completely taking coffee out of your expenses, you'll save a lot more money. So you're young, you're on the go, you always have something going on and sometimes you need that quick pick me up. I'd encourage you to think of something a little different, something that's healthier, maybe an apple, maybe a cup of water. Those are both scientifically proven to keep you alert just as coffee would without the jitteriness or the caffeine crash that follows soon after. Trust me, I know. I know you probably saw this one coming, so I'm just gonna go through this really fast. Every time I see somebody with a bottled water in their hand, one thing comes to my head immediately. Why? Why are you buying water? And I only say that because water is abundant. It's literally everywhere and that's the one thing that should be free all the time. And you could absolutely make it to where it is free all the time. And something that I say a lot of the time is I mostly just drink water. So you best believe I was definitely that guy who would go into the grocery store and get cases and cases of bottles of water. Didn't matter if it was Deer Park, Aquafina, Dasani, I was getting it. Whatever was on sale, whatever had the most bulk I could get, I would just get cases and cases. But you know, when you're living on the third floor, that gets old quick. Plus I did the math of how much money I'm wasting by buying bottles and bottles of water and I got pretty mad. So I went out and got myself a Brita filter and a water bottle and I can pretty much take that water bottle anywhere I go, whether it's work or to the gym or just leaving it in my car. That way I can fill it up at any given time and not have to worry about paying for water. That's what I do. Being an avid water drinker, I can attest that yeah, different waters taste differently and for some folks that might be a deal breaker, but for me, if the water's cold and it's clean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's good enough for me. Like, it's cold. Water's a tasteless, odorless liquid anyways. Like, sure, there might be certain nuances, but 
There's no difference in water that's so great that I see necessary to actually pay for water as opposed to drinking it for free. You know what I'm saying? Like the purpose of drinking water is to stay healthy and hydrated, not to, not to taste the best thing you've ever tasted in your life. Speaking of taste, you know what I could not stand for the longest time? And I know, I know you're going to resonate with this. Cooking. How many of us guys in our 20s like cooking anyways? I know I don't. I still don't like cooking. But anyways, because of my disdain for cooking, I bought into this online auto food delivery service to save me some time. And basically the way it worked was they delivered full meals for that was supposed to last for the entire month. Healthy, lean meals that all that was everything was sectioned off the grains, the vegetables, and the meats were all sectioned off. And all you really had to do was put them on a plate and microwave them for three to five minutes. And that would be your meal for the day. And it was really, really convenient. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I did this purely for convenience because I kept telling myself that I was too busy to be cooking, which we all know is a lie. And I knew it would save me a lot of time, but it wasn't the best financial decision that I've ever made because as a result of saving more time, it costed me more money up front. So aside from the money, I actually had a big problem with this. The company I ordered from makes very health-based meals. I told you I'm in the fitness, always have been. And since the company was so health-based, like 90% of the meals that I got tasted bland. Like I may as well have just been eating water. The serving sizes were tiny and I eat a lot, so I was pretty upset about that. And with that said, there actually wasn't enough food to last all month, despite what it was saying on the box. And that led to me grocery shopping, which the whole point of getting this auto delivery service was to not have to grocery shop and not have to cook, but I had to do both of those things once I ran out of food with the delivery service, which in turn cost me more money per month than I was spending anyways. And the food delivery service costed me $160 per month. And that's not including the grocery shopping I did in addition to that. So, needless to say, I stopped paying for that auto food delivery service because the price that I was paying did not match the benefits or the reason that I wanted to pay for it in the first place. Please learn from my mistakes. I'm telling you what's up right here, right now. Did I, did I tell you that I was in the fitness? Well, yeah, even though I was in the fitness, I also loved to eat and something that I used to spend a ton of money on was just junk food. And just because junk food is everywhere, it's inexpensive and it's really easy food to bulk up on. And when I would go through my bulking seasons, that's what I would eat a lot of because I told myself that when you're bulking, you can just eat anything inside. It won't affect you negatively. But you know, that just, that, that just makes sense, right? And I'm talking about Doritos, Cheetos, Swiss rolls, little Debbie cakes, those little apple pies, you know what I'm saying? All of that. And if I'm completely honest, this wasn't a decision that I just made one day. Like I just woke up one morning like, no, I don't want to buy these anymore. It just kind of happened over time. It was a very subconscious decision to decide not to buy any more junk food ever again. Like I don't remember the last time I bought junk food. It was almost like I, dare I say, matured out of getting junk food all the time. I mean, I've, I've always been a big eater, but I guess as I've gotten older, I just kind of became less and less of a stacker. Like I really do appreciate real food and feeling full when I'm done eating, as opposed to eating a bunch of junk food and still getting hungry and craving more food, more junk food, more everything. So I guess on a subconscious level, I just came to the realization that it's a waste of time and money to eat all that junk food if I'm just going to end up hungry at the end of it anyways. Plus, laying off the junk food will improve your physique. Just saying. You want to know something I haven't bought in a really, really long time? Clothes. I haven't bought clothes in years. Like, I honestly don't even remember the last time I bought myself a shirt, some jeans, some khakis, some shorts. Like, I really have a hard time remembering the last time I spent any money on clothes, period. I just have a lot of clothes, man. Like, I have a lot of nice clothes from years ago that I forget that I have sometimes. And when I see them and look at them, I look at it like this. Wow, I have so many clothes from forever ago 
and I can still wear them. So what's the point of buying anything new? And the thing about these clothes that I've had for all these years, the thing is, I know for a fact I'm not going to grow out of them. I am 5'6", and I'm not going to get any taller. That's just the facts. Like, I'm not even being negative about this. I'm a grown man. They're, I'm not growing anymore. And sure, my arm muscles and leg muscles might grow, but the bottom line is I'm not going to grow out of my size of clothes anytime soon. So my shirts and pants size remains the same. Plus, I've never really been big on buying clothes anyways. I'd honestly much rather buy food. But usually the clothes that you see me wear in my videos, you know, you might see me wear a Nike shirt, a polo shirt, sports like I have one right now, Alabama, you know what I'm saying? Most of the shirts that you see me wear in my videos are gifts. And, and some of the shirts I've won for free, whether it was won in a pull-up contest or I did some school event where you had to do something crazy like jump in a pool of ice water in the middle of the winter. Yes, I actually did that. <laughs> but what I'm what I'm getting at here is I don't go out of my way to buy clothes because like honestly, I just I have way too many clothes and sometimes I even just get a, a big bag and just put all a bunch of a bunch of clothes in there and I just give them away because I just feel like I have way too many clothes. And I just feel like when you have an abundance of something like to the point where it's, you have way more than enough, there's no reason to go out and buy more cuz then you're just going to have clutter and I don't like clutter at all. So this is something that you probably wouldn't have expected to be on the list, but this is something that I spent so much money on, specifically when I was younger. It was just one of those things that I was heavily, heavily into. So there's actually two parts to this. Uh, the first part is when I was younger, I used to be really, really, really into comic books like Spider-Man, Captain America, Fantastic Four, the, the Marvel comics is what I was heavily, heavily into. And seeing the muscles on all the superheroes is what motivated me to want to get into fitness in the first place. But yeah, that was something that I used to really be into when I was younger. Along the same lines, as I got older, the same type of pattern came when uh, I really got into anime, specifically Naruto, One Piece, Dragon Ball Z. I got really into the manga because the manga was always ahead of the actual TV show and I wanted to know what was going to happen next so I would read the manga plus the artwork in the manga was ridiculous and I've always been in the art ever since I could really hold a pencil and I wanted to draw the scenes that were within the, the manga so I spent a lot and I mean a lot of my money on those like I had several I had manga on top of manga for different series I used to spend some money on that and I used to I, I just spent so much time reading and drawing from those books it was ridiculous this is something that I haven't bought in a really long time it's been at least 10 years since I bought one and it's because I just found other passions in life like for me, drumming is a big passion of mine. I've been doing that since I was 11 years old. And also another passion of mine is martial arts. And so when I got into both of those things at the same time, I just I just kind of got completely away from, from anime and all the other stuff because I just felt like passions were more important. Like drawing was something that I've always been into, but I was more passionate about music and I was more passionate about martial arts than I was about drawing. And while that's not the most frugal lifestyle type of example I can give you on how you can save money, it can apply to anywhere in your life if you're into those types of things, whether it's a certain type of series or a certain type of video game that you find yourself spending loads of money on. I, I, I redirected my way of thinking in terms of what is more important, my passions or the, the things that, that I like, you know what I mean? Like series that you're really into like some people are really into harry potter like like for me it was naruto for you it might be a completely different series that's not even an anime it could be something like harry potter it could be something like game of thrones it could be something like it could be the lord of the rings it could be star wars but i kind of wanted to redirect my way of thinking and not focus so much on consuming that content despite the fact that it's really good there's nothing wrong with consuming it, but when you kind of get overindulged like I did, I, I just realized when I did find some passions of mine that the passions were far more important than the actual consuming content, if that makes sense. Because those things can all get very spendy if you overindulge. And that's really the whole point I want to drive is, is that whatever series that you're into, 
because you're young like me, I'm sure you have something that you're really into just like that. It might even be the same exact thing. That's what I would recommend for you to really focus on your purpose and on your passions and see if you don't stray away from those things that you're so into. So, so speaking of when I was younger, I remember growing up seeing the first iPhone getting released. And I remember from the transition of middle school to high school, seeing my friends and seeing their parents walk around with the latest version of the newest iPhone as generation from generation came out. As you can relate, I wasn't able to do that in high school. But the moment I could, in the moment that it was time to upgrade my phone every single time, any chance I got, I did. And you know, I did that until my goals became more important than a phone that continues to be resold with one feature that the previous generations just can't have. And you know, and you know, I did that until my goals became far more important than a phone that keeps getting resold with one unique feature that none of the previous generations of the phones can have. I came to the realization that the previous iPhones have pretty much the same functionality as the newer ones for the most part. And I also realized that I wouldn't really be using the new features that the new iPhones have anyways. Do you remember when Siri first came out and it was like a really big deal? Yeah, well, to this day, I have literally never used Siri. All right, here's the moment you've been waiting for. I stopped paying for cable years ago. As I've developed a more productive lifestyle, I found myself watching TV less and less to the point that I really don't even watch TV at all. At the most, I might watch a really good movie or a really good TV series twice a month, and even that's rare. And what made me stop buying cable was I grew up with it and it's been around me my whole life. Realizing that cable is overpriced, I hardly watch any of the channels, and, and growing up I just saw that families kind of saw cable as almost a necessity to have within their homes. And noticing early on that cable is absolutely obsolete and streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus are way, way cheaper. And they don't have any commercials, any installation fees, none of that. Plus, I personally have a hard time sitting down in front of a screen just watching TV, letting time like hours and hours go by. I just really have a hard time doing that. It's very uncomfortable for me. And it's because I feel like I always need to be doing something at all times. That actually might be a flaw now that I think of it. But anyways, the first time I completely paid for bills on my own, I was 20. I had an internship at this huge factory and on my days off, I would be so tired that I would just be sitting down in front of the TV for hours and hours and hours. Despite the fact that I had aspirations and things that I wanted to accomplish outside of that internship, I opted to sit in front of the TV and just and just chill all day. Then one day I just asked myself, wow, is this really what life is like after graduation? Just go to work, go home, watch TV and chill? That's a very boring life and I just, I didn't want that for myself. Plus when I saw the cable bill, I got mad because the price was ridiculous and I felt like I was being ripped off because compared to the amount of channels that I got, the price was stupid. Especially considering the area I was living in and everything, I felt like I was being ripped off. So yeah, five years, no cable from me. Nope, none. None at all. Have not paid for cable in five years. Anyways guys, those are the things that I stopped buying to save more money. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.